Hello everybody, this is Ray Savage with Cambium Networks. Thanks for joining us today on the webinar. Uh, today we'll be discussing the PMP450 and quality of service configuration. And our special guest speaker is Justin Robinson, who is the channel manager in North America. The uh, presentation is being recorded and it will be posted to the uh, community uh, later on today and you'll be able to uh, post your questions and discuss any topics there. Well, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Justin. Thank you, Ray. So uh, thanks again, uh, Justin Robinson, uh, Channel Manager West North America. And uh, today we're going to discuss a topic that has, uh, been uh, that has been intriguing as long as Canopy has been out. It's been how to configure the burst bucket, what it all means, and what settings are, are good for for our network. So today we are going to uh, briefly look at the burst bucket and some different examples with screenshots uh, so that you can actually em uh, employ this on your own network. So with some of the objectives, uh, the first thing that we'll look at is actually the canopy frame structure itself. It's very important uh, that we have this basic concept down as it does dictate uh, depending on the application, how much bandwidth is going either on the uplink or downlink. And also these changes will have uh, a dramatic effect on the total throughput for the uh, sector in an aggregate fashion. Secondly, we'll look at the canopy token bucket concept and what it means and how it works. And thirdly, we'll give some real world examples on service plans. Uh, that can be offered and what some examples look like uh, in the QoS tab of the SM uh, subscriber module. And some target market examples uh, will include our uh, WIST deployments, uh, municipalities or utility deployments, uh, what, they, what kind of service packages they look at, and then uh, one of our hot topics are uh, video surveillance uh, deployments. And again, these are just a few examples of the provisioning in the SM uh, as we won't touch on anything with VLANs or network address translations or RADIUS. So this is just uh, a pretty brief uh, overview on, uh, on just the MIR and the burst bucket uh, for, uh, for Canopy. So with that, we will look into uh, the structure of, uh, of the frame for canopy. So the basic air interface structure of canopy is comprised of originally two and a half milliseconds or five milliseconds now with our latest releases. So with the, with the setup for the frame, um, the AP communicates with the, with the SM in the PMP uh, protocol. So as you can see, basic frame size in one direction is two and a half milliseconds or now five milliseconds, depending on the thermal that you are ready. So by default, the downlink percentage is set to 75%. Uh, most WISP operators will operate this in a 75, uh, 70 to 75% for the downlink. Uh, and again, that's because most operators like an asymmetrical package deal uh, for their customers. So as you can see, uh, we have um, in the uplink and downlink, So you can see in the uplink and downlink um, with the setup. Um, All right, you can see the packets are um, with the data packets are, are, are skewed in with uh, the framing. So when you look at the airframe in general, you'll see that 
on the on the downlink side, which is the transmit side from the AP, uh, on the first stage is the beacon. So this will consist of uh, the color code and uh, the max distance. Uh, after that, you'll have the scheduling for the uplink on the next packet. Then you'll have acknowledgments, and then we'll actually have the individual data uh, stream itself, followed by the guard band or guard time. And then on the other end of the, of the frame, we'll have the AP uplink received, which consists of the acknowledgments, data, and control slots. So the big thing is uh, with anything that's TDD, uh, we have the guard band or the guard time so that the AP actually stops transmitting so that it can listen on the same channel. So again, like previously mentioned, uh, in the first uh, parts of the frame are the beacon and the uplink and the acknowledgments. Um, and again, uh, acknowledgments, uh, they're variable, so they can be based on activity and demand. So data, frag data slots are fragmented in 64 bytes. This has long been a benefit of using Canopy. So if you're ever in a near or non-line of sight condition and part of the fragment of the packet does not uh, get through, it won't retransmit the entire packet, just the byte, the 64 byte fragment that was not uh, received. And then on the uplink, uh, we have uh, the control slots, uh, which are set in the AP, and we actually have a reference to how many control slots uh, or contention slots you will need per SMs on your sector uh, for that. So in this last example for the airframe, uh, the big thing here is how we it's flexible so we can change the percentages. So again, by default, it comes 75% downlink. So what that means is that 75% of your of your frame is actually consisting of the data packets. And again, the SM will adjust this based on the AP's information that it sends out uh, in the scheduler. So now that we've talked about the, the frame, let's look at, at the burst bucket. So this is uh, the most infamous picture with Canopy, our burst bucket. So what does it mean? How is it used? Uh, this is probably one of the biggest questions that is brought up uh, in uh, dealings with people with Canopy is, is how does it work? So this is a good illustration that kind of talks about the water flowing into the bucket, which is our maximum information rate. And then we have our burst size, which is burst size or allocation which is literally how much is in the bucket. So you can either think of it as liquid or tokens. Uh, and then we have this overflow where when the bucket gets too full, that the radio has to release some of that excess bandwidth. The bucket size, and then we have how much we get let out, which is uh, less than the maximum burst rate. So this is the formula that we have used uh, for years where it's uh, the MIR times uh, the burst duration plus the burst size equals the maximum burst rate times the burst duration, whereas uh, the burst duration is equal to the burst size divided by you know, the maximum burst rate minus the maximum information rate. So sometimes, especially for me, this was not the easiest thing to look at and, and, and compute. So we're, we're going to work on, uh, on trying to may give you a real world example and, and get a little easier. All right, so looking at this example here, taken from our uh, MIR settings on our SM, uh, the first two columns at the top, the sustained uplink and sustained downlink, uh, the uplink is set for five megs and the downlink is set for 15 megs. So those are our sustain rates. Our uplink burst allocation, uh, as you can see, it's set to 170 megabits, and our downlink burst allocation is set to 200. Now, the biggest thing to remember is with the allocation, this is not a rate, it's a quantity. So this is actually the amount that's filling the bucket. So remember, it's not a rate, it is a quantity. So it's how much is filling. And then we have our max burst uplink and max burst downlink data rate. 
set to uh, 7 megs and then 20 megs uh, respectively in the uplink and downlink. So based on these settings, the first thing that we need to calculate is actually the true burst rate. Uh, so the way that we, that we figure that out is we take a look at the maximum burst rate in the downlink, which is set to 20 megs, minus the sustained data rate, which is 15 megs, which actually gives us 5 megs for bursting. So you have to remember that we already have provision in the pipe 15 megs for sustain rate, and we're saying for the bursting that we're going to add, we're going to make that pipe up to 20, so the difference is going to be 5 megs. So with the available resources on the networks and with the right RF settings and conditions, uh, your SM will burst 5 megs over your sustain rate. But the million dollar question is normally for how long will this last? WISPs like to know, any kind of operators like to know exactly how long it will last so that they can make sure that they scale the customer down to what they're paying for. So the way that we figure that out is we'll actually take the downlink burst allocation, again how big the bucket is, 200 megs, and we'll divide that by the burst difference, which is 5 megs. So 200 divided by 5 gives us 40. So that burst duration is going to last 40 seconds. So the customer will get 20 megs before sustaining at 15 megs. So this 40 number is very important because not only is that the time it takes for uh, the bucket to extinguish, but also that's the amount of time that it takes for the bucket to replenish as well. Because again, it's not a rate, it's a quantity in uh, the burst allocation. So knowing that, we'll look at a couple of examples of different service plans uh, that we've seen uh, in some deployments. So in a typical WISP deployment with BURST, uh, the first setting you'll see in the upper right hand is actually in the access point. So this is where we consider the frame. So earlier, or, uh, so earlier when we saw the picture of the actual frame, this is the settings that we would use to manipulate the data slot. So we have the max range and then the downlink data. By default, it's set to 75. So here we set it to 70. So with that, in the subscriber module of the MIR, we have a downlink sustain of 5 megs and an uplink sustain of 3 megs uh, with bursts of 15 megs down and 13 megs up. So remembering the math that we did before of taking the downlink burst allocation of 150 megs, uh, dividing that by our difference uh, between our burst and our sustain of 10 megs, we'll see that we have a burst duration of 10 seconds. So in another example uh, of a WIS deployment, uh, we see the exact same settings in the access point, but as you can see on the MIR settings in the SM, uh, the big difference is we have zero for the uplink and downlink burst allocation. So by default, the max burst uplink and downlink, uh, when you get a subscriber module, is set to zero, which means that it's uncapped, which means that it will burst. So what we do is we pretty much empty the bucket completely so there's nothing to spill out or to use. So that's where we use in the uplink burst allocation and downlink burst allocation of zero. That way there's nothing in the bucket that we can use for an overage. So with no tokens in the bucket, burst is negated and your customer just has a sustain rate of what is set in, uh, in the uplink and downlink. So in this example, 5 megs and uh, 3 megs. So in an enterprise setup, uh, this could be uh, TDM replacements or business-to-business uh, -business customers or municipalities or anybody where they want a more symmetrical service, this is an example of a, of a setup. So in the access point, uh, for the uplink and downlink, uh, we set 50% for the data. So again, this is an aggregate figure. So if, let's say that the conditions you had 100 meg AP, 50 megs would be uh, allocated for going down, 50 megs for coming back up. So in the SM, 
we have uh, a sustained downlink and uplink of 10 megs with no bursts. So again, we see this typically if you have leaf line replacements or providing uh, smaller bandwidth circuits uh, to uh, business customers or uh, campus environments uh, for remote buildings where they don't want any bursts, they just want a constant uh, sustained rate. So this is an, an example of that provision. So video surveillance. So one of uh, Cambium's uh, hotbeds, especially with the release of our new 450i product, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of need for uplink or upstream uh, transportation. So with that, as you can see in the AP, we've actually changed the downlink percentage only to 30. That way we can have 70% uh, of that bandwidth actually heading up to the access point, which is what you need uh, with video surveillance. Um, you need all your bandwidth going up except for, say, PTZ control or if you are running uh, any kind of I.O. Uh, gear off the camera. That's when you need that small allocated amount going downstream. So we have it set for 30% down, 70% up. And in this example, uh, we have a 20 meg sustained uplink with a 2 meg sustained down. So one of the big things is depending on uh, what cameras you guys are using in the settings, uh, you can set it to where if the camera has a little bit of a spike increase due to the cut filter, or depending on uh, the type of codec that you're running, uh, you can set that a little bit of a buffer in the uplink uh, data rate or the downlink data rate. And again, the flexible frame and the MRS settings uh, are ideal for video transport in the 450 and uh, newly released 450i. So the, the last caveat I will say for, for this, which I brought up earlier, is uh, these are all aggregate figures, so remember, depending on how you have uh, the downlink data slot set for the access point is going to impact how much bandwidth you have going one direction or the other. So uh, be diligent, and we do have a capacity planner tool that is available uh, online at caminnetworks.com under support for the 450. Uh, actually help you in planning out your network. Uh, WISP operators uh, will have a different oversubscription need than say video surveillance deployment or business to business customers. So uh, as long as everything is planned out properly using Link Planner and or the Capacity Planner, uh, we feel that these settings will, will help you uh, make sure that your guys' network is uh, not being overutilized and is making sure that your customers have a great experience uh, on Canopy. So with that, thank you for your time today. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, you can post them in the form, and uh, I can make sure that I answer them. Thank you. Thanks very much, Justin. Thank you, everybody.